possibly one of the most asked questions by photographers is what settings did you use? I know that myself, I've asked this question multiple times and I've also been asked this question multiple times. And this got me thinking, is there a camera mode that can give us, the photographer, a foolproof way of not messing our settings up, but giving us full creative control over our images? Well, I do think that there is, and it's manual mode with auto ISO. And after watching this video, I hope that you go out and actually try this mode for yourself. Okay, so I know that there'll be a lot of you watching this video that will already have your favorite modes, depending on the situation and the environment that you're shooting in. And if that's working for you, that's awesome. Just keep using those modes. All that I'm gonna do in this video is show you why I use manual mode with auto ISO for around 95% of what I shoot, I would say. And that's from anything from fast action, wildlife, to still shots, and everything in between. So to start off with, and to make this make sense, let's take a look at the exposure triangle. We've got the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. And all of these things have one thing in common, and that's that they dictate how much light our camera sensor is exposed to. The aperture, by how wide open or closed down it is set. The shutter speed, by how fast or slow it is set and the ISO by how high or low it is set. The aperture affects depth of field among other things, and this helps the photographer dictate how much of the background we want in or out of focus. And the shutter speed can be used to freeze action or do the complete opposite and create motion streaks in our images. ISO or ISO is the odd one out here, as it doesn't affect the creative vision of the photographer, that is, unless of course you want to add a lot of noise into your images, then just crank the ISO up until your heart's content. This is why using manual mode with auto ISO is so good, because it gives the photographer creative control by using the aperture and the shutter speed for creative purposes, and the camera chooses the ISO. And I know what you're thinking, leaving the camera free to choose the ISO based on our shutter and our aperture settings could mean that the camera chooses a high ISO creating a noisy image. Well, this is true, that could happen, but I'd much rather get a noisy image than no image at all. Here's a set of images taken using manual mode with auto ISO. The difference between these two images is that one of them was shot at ISO 6400. Can you tell which one that is? Well, stick around until the end of the video to find out. If you've got any value out of this video so far, I'd ask that you give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel as there's plenty more videos like this for you to watch. Okay, so let's take a look at a real world scenario and where using manual in conjunction with auto ISO works very well. So for myself, I shoot a lot of enduro and motocross photography, which is obviously very fast paced, but it can all be, also be quite slow and even static at times. So for me, I need the option to be able to change my settings on the fly at any given time. Okay, so in this scenario, I'm wanting to capture two different types of shots. I'm here beneath trees, so I'm in a shaded area, and I'm looking to capture riders coming down the straightaway along here, which is in a shaded area. Then I'm going to pivot, turn around, zoom in to over there. I'll zoom the camera in so you can see. And that shot's in open daylight. Now we've got a little bit of cloud cover today. So this is an ideal scenario of where auto ISO really comes into its own. So as you can see between those two shots, the camera has decided the auto ISO by itself and I'm quite happy for it to do that. It had been much harder for me to change the settings on the fly and get them right. It's much better having control of the aperture and the shutter and letting the camera decide the, the auto ISO. In this scenario, again, we're in, we're in shade here, but I'm also shooting out into a field where the sun's directly hitting the riders. And it's just too fast for me to change. The best person in the world, you know, I mean, there will be someone out there, surely, who can uh, change them on the fly pretty quick, but you get the gist of it, auto ISO, in my opinion, is the way forward, for, especially for this type of stuff. So I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm obviously going to show you how to set up 
or the YSO in conjunction with manual mode. This will vary depending on the camera brand that you own, but I'll show you how I do this on my Canon 7D Mark II as well as on my Pentax K3. Okay, in order to set this up on the Canon 7D Mark II, you're going to want to first switch the camera on, obviously. If the info button, if your quick menu hasn't come up, press your info button a couple of times to bring that up. Jump in at the quick menu by pressing the Q button. Cycle along to your ISO. Select that. Put it in auto and you're done. You now have manual with auto ISO. As you can see, the shutter changes and the aperture changes and the ISO will change automatically. And for the K3, you also want to turn the camera on. It's a pretty important part. As you can see here, we're in manual mode, but we don't actually want to be in manual mode on the Pentax. We want to be in the TAV mode because Pentax has a built-in option on their mode dial for manual with auto ISO. And just to prove that, I'll cycle down the shutter here and you can see the ISO changing automatically without the aperture changing and again I'll change the aperture and as you can see the ISO is changing so Pentax has a dedicated option which is TAV mode and it's basically the same as manual with auto ISO an overlooked but very important setting when using manual mode with auto ISO is your camera's metering mode because this can drastically affect the exposure that your camera gives you and I'll be making a separate video on this. It'll be over here or over here. Click on that and I'll see you over there. And as always, thanks for watching.